Okay, assalamu alaikum again. Uh, let us do some problems on correlated type D modulator we have discussed in the previous session. <clears throat> I have collected some problems for you and uh, these problems are from section uh, from chapter 7. So these problems are already shared with you and solutions are provided to you. So let us discuss a problem 7.9. I think you can see this uh, screen section problem 7.9. A binary digital modulation system implies the signal S0, which is 0, S1, which is equal to A. And this time interval, uh, they are defined. T greater than 0, but less than T for transmitting the information. So these are our two signals that we have gathered from some, some source and we want to transmit them. This is called on-off signaling, okay? So either zero or one, zero or A, zero or A. The demodulator cross correlates the received signal RT with S1 and samples the output of the correlator at T is equal to T. So the question is, determine the optimum detector for an AWGN channel and optimum threshold, assuming that the signals are equally probable. They have equal probability. That means that probability of probability is 50%, one by two. Determine the probability of error as a function of the SNR, signal to noise ratio. How does on-off signaling compare with antipodal signaling? Okay, so these are the two questions. Let us see the solution for this problem. So this is the solution. The received signal may be expressed as R of T is equal to noise. If S0 was transmitted, since there is a zero here, zero plus N. So if the S0 was transmitted, then R of T is A plus N. If S1 was transmitted, so the value of S1 is A. It is corrupted by noise. So noise is additive white Gaussian noise. Assuming that ST has unit energy, then the sample output of the cross correlators are R is equal to SM plus N. So M is equal to zero and one. So we have already seen that received signal is the transmitted signal plus noise, where S zero is zero and S one is equal to A times under root T. Okay, so S1 is A, A times T under the root. And the nice term N is zero mean Gaussian random variable with variance sigma square N. So we can find the, uh, the nice as zero mean, but we have to find its variance. So we, we uh, take the expectation, okay, of nice with itself. You can see we have double integration n into nt. So basically n square of t. So f expected value of n into n at tau. So dt and d tau. So 0 to t, 0 to t, 1 by t. So the expectation of noise with with itself. So this, is, this becomes uh, a delta function uh, shifted by tau. Okay. So if you integrate this whole thing, this becomes equal to n naught by two. Okay. So this becomes uh, delta function. The integration is from zero to t. Then another integration from zero to t. So this whole thing will be equal to t. So t will be cancelled with this t, and we are left with n naught by two. The probability density function for the sample output. So the probability density function is this likelihood function f r given s zero so equal to e raised to the power minus r minus zero because we are sending s zero as equal to zero so this will be equal to minus r square over n naught but for s one we have r minus a times t under the root so s one is a times t under the root. So these are the two likelihood function. Since the signals are equally probable, signals are equally probable. So that means um, 
they have equal probabilities. The optimal detector decides in favor of F in favor of S0. So the detector decides in favor of S0 if the probability mass function or the likelihood function uh, F or S given S0 is greater than F or given S1. So this is another notation for using this, this thing. Okay. So otherwise it decides in favor of S1. So if we, we have to check, we have to find this expression F or if this function has greater than if this function, then we decide in favor of S, um, S0. Otherwise we decide in favor of S1. The decision rule may be expressed as uh, take the ratio of these two so you will get expression for uh, uh, rs0 over rs1 so rs0 is this thing divided by this thing okay so we are left with uh, since it is an exponential function so r minus a times p under the root whole square minus r square Okay, minus, so this thing divided by this thing. Oh, sorry, this thing divided by this thing. So FRS naught divided by FRS1. So divide this expression by this expression and you will get this expression. Exponentials are subtracted from each other and then exponents and then we, we get this, finally this expression. So take the square, expand it, you will get 2r minus 80 into t and the root and this thing divided by n naught. If this thing is greater than 1, that means we are uh, deciding S0. If this is less than uh, S1, then we are deciding 1. So you can put the value of whatever is the received signal, the value of that signal minus a amplitude time and all this information n naught. So if this number comes out to be greater than one, we are deciding in favor of S0, otherwise S1. Or equivalent, if R is greater than S1, then R is greater than one by two, A, T under the root. Okay, so you can get this expression from this one because um, you, can, uh, you can remove uh, the exponential and from this expression you will get 1 by 2, A times the A times T under the root. The optimum threshold is therefore 1 by 2, A, T under the root. Okay. So this actually comes from this thing, 2R minus A times T under the root. So this is the optimum threshold we have to set on the detector side. Okay. Then <clears throat> the second... Uh, we have found the optimum detector. Now we want to determine the probability of error as a function of SNR. So what will be the effect of signal to noise ratio on the probability of error? Okay. So prefer to find the probability or average probability of error, we use this expression. PE probability of error is equal to one by two probability of E given S0 plus 1 by 2 probability of E given S1. So this 1 by 2 comes from the fact that the two signals have equal probability. Okay, so that means 50%, 50%. So taking it common and then we have to find probability of E given S0. So this is nothing but integrating 1 by 2 times A T under the root up to infinity. So since this is a threshold, this is the boundary. <clears throat> so from this boundary to infinity, we will integrate the likelihood function f r s zero dr with respect to dr, this received signal. And then adding it one by two, this one by two, and then probability of e given s one. So this again from minus infinity up to this point. Okay. So after integration, I won't go into this detail, but uh, let us put the values over here. In this case, minus r square over n r exponent, and in this case, r minus a, um, r minus a p under the root whole square dr. So, by using the conventional integration techniques, we 
uh, change this this uh, this limit from 1 by 2 at the end of the root to 2 over n naught a times t under the root and then e raised to power minus uh, infinity all square divided by 2 minus x sorry it is i think it is x okay it, it minus x change of variable minus x square into dx so we get these two functions and after integration if we compare these expressions since 1 by 2 and 1 by both are same so this becomes equal to uh, 2 times and uh, using comparing it with our q function we get this expression so you have to compare this function with or this one with the standard q function definition so you will get expression in terms of q function so this is the argument 1 by 2 2 over n not under root a times t so this is nothing but the signal power and this is the noise so it is signal to noise ratio so it is a signal to noise ratio so q is so you can see that um, if we increase the signal to noise ratio this function will decrease so that means the the probability of error will be decreasing okay. so uh, this signal to noise ratio is defined as 1 by 2 a squared t divided by n naught thus the on of signaling requires a factor of two more energy to achieve the same probability of error as the antipode signal so we have to uh, in this in the case of antipodal signal we get the signal to noise ratio like a square t divided by n naught if we want to achieve the same probability of error we have to increase s and r by two times so that we get the um, so as you can see a two more factor of two more energy to achieve the same probability of error so antipodal signal is, in, is better than on off signaling so this was problem 7.9 uh, now let us move to problem 7.10 7.10 uh, where is 7.10 okay let me find the Problem is okay. So this is uh, problem seven point ten. In seven point ten, a binary pan communication system implies rectangular pulses of duration T B and amplitude plus minus A to transmit the digital information at rate r b equal to 10 is power 5 bits per second okay so binary pam signal has rectangular pulses where whose amplitudes are either plus uh, plus a or minus a so pulse amplitude modulation with two pulses plus a and minus a in the duration tb and bits are transmitted at this rate 10 is power 5 bits per second if the power spectral density of the additive white Gaussian noise is n naught by 2, where n naught is 10 to the power minus 2 watts per hertz, determine the value of A that is required to achieve probability of error PB equal to 10 to the power minus 6. So we have to find this A such that we achieve this probability and under these conditions, the noise is n 10 to the power minus 2 watts per hertz. And the transmission bit rate is 10 to the power 5 bits per second. Okay. So let us see what is the solution for this problem. Okay, so this is this is the solution for problem 7.10. Since the rate of transmission R is equal to 10 to the power 5 bits per second, the bit interval TB is nothing but 10 to the power minus 5. So we take the reciprocal of this number, so TB is 10 to the power minus 5. The probability of error in a binary PAM system is this expression. So you can see the solution or you can see my slides and uh, 
uh, actually we have not discussed this thing how to find the probability of error so i will record a lecture for the, for you uh, how to find the or we may discuss discuss it in our live session how to find the probability of error uh, yesterday i have shared with you the colored slides so you can go through those slides you will find that this expression is there for pan signal binary pan signal so q is a function of 2 times eb over n naught so if we find eb then n naught is already given so we will find this argument and then we will look into standard table for q function so we can find the probability of error eb in case of pam binary pam signal is a square times tb okay so energy it is energy so a square is power and into time power into time is energy so a square into tb and probability of error is equal to p p2 is given as uh, 10 raised power minus 6 so this number is already given to you okay so 2 eb over n naught is equal to uh, put the values for n naught and eb you will get 4.75 so tb is already given eb is 4.75 yeah, eb is uh, uh, 4.75 square n naught by 2 so this comes out to be 0.112813 so after finding eb tb is already known so we can easily find the value of a so the amplitude of a should be 106.21 so in case of binary time we have to sub we have to transmit signals with amplitudes 106.21 or minus 106.21 because it is plus a or minus a so i hope you you will be able to understand this problem So from these problems, uh, you can see that uh, <clears throat> you can see that we have to find the decision rule. This is the decision rule for probability of error. Okay, and using the likelihood functions. For example, in this case, probabilities are given as p and one minus p. This p e and this p e. P probability of s one is p, and probability of s two is one minus p. And this is the conditional probability or the likelihood function frs1 this is a problem 7.1 so it is similar to the previous problem 7.9 so we can find the probability of error over here and uh, he has uh, found this the important thing is that if you you are able to write this expression you are 50 percent done because the rest is all mathematics and uh, we can use standard tables or functions and find the exact expression for probability of error <clears throat> so in this case you can see that probability is dependent on q function q function is this one so this zeta are, are these expressions okay so he has taken from this and um, this zeta these, these are actually the limits minus infinity to zeta one and uh, zeta two to infinity so you can find the probability of error then he has taken if, if p is 0 0.3, 30% probable, then 1 minus p is 0 0.7. eb over n naught perhaps is given as 10. So you can find the exact ex expression. You can find q 4.3774 from the uh, q function table. Okay. So uh, probability of error comes out to be 3.5 into. Mm, 3.539 into 10 to the power minus 6. If the symbols are equally probable, that, that means p is equal to 1 point, uh, p is equal to 1 by 2, 50 percent, then we may get an expression like this for probability of error. So this 7.11 problem and 7.9, 10, so you can solve other problems as well because you are already provided with the solutions and uh, I, I, I have not much time to discuss all these problems, but okay. Then this problem 7.14 is about match filter, filter match to ST. So we have not yet discussed this topic. So I will now move towards uh, match filter type uh, demodulator because we have discussed correlator type demodulator, and then this is the second type 
which is called the uh, matched filter. Okay, so its expression looks like this. H of the, the we have to understand the impulse response. Impulse. Uh, uh, this is the impulse response of the filter, which is uh, related to our transmitted signal. So H of t is equal to S t minus t. So you can see that it is uh, time reversed by minus t, and then plus t is the symbol duration. The S of t is our so. This is a matching. This is actually matching the filter with the transmitted signal, but signal is uh, not S of t, but it is uh, in, a, in a specific form S t minus t. Okay, so S t minus t. So t is given in this problem 7.14, which is 3, 3 minus t, and uh, S 3 minus t is uh, perhaps in, in the given problem, it is equal to S of t. So we have used the fact that S of T is even with respect to T, T is equal to T by two. So this is an even function. So we have to read the statement of problem 7.14. Okay. Then the output of the match filter will be the convolution between S of T and S of T. Okay. So this is the final output and sketch Y, the output of Y of T is given by this expression. And uh, then again, the noise, the noise, and the variance of the noise, and then we have to find the signal to noise ratio and something like that. So, uh, we will discuss the match filter type demodulator and then we will come back to some of these problems again. Okay, I break it over here and conclude the session. Hello?